What's going on everybody? C4 here. Welcome back to episode 30 of the Las Vegas Raiders franchise mode here in Madden 20. How we're going to be doing in the playoffs for video format is one episode per round. Obviously, if we are one and done, which would be not catastrophic for the franchise because making the playoffs was a pretty big step in the right direction. But if we're one and done, that's going to be incredibly disappointing. Uh, and then we'll have to, you know, it's just one. And I'm going to do a slightly different highlights. I've looked around at some of the other franchise uh, Madden 20 videos around. And I'm the only one that does two games per episode. So it's generally less gameplay than what you get uh, in, in different types of, like on other channels and stuff like that. So this is going to be more of that one style because we're just playing the one game. So you're going to see a lot more of the drives, a lot more of the gameplay, a lot more of my struggles, a lot more of my successes on both offense and defense in trying to stop this 11 and 5 Houston Texan team. But there's not much else to say, man. We are the top dogs in the AFC West. We had everything up for grabs in the AFC to be the number one seed. We finished the year against Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh played their starters. We played our starters for probably a quarter. And we had a huge injury in that game. A lot of people believe that said injury came to Mr. John Ross, who's out for nine more weeks. I mean, that should put him right on track to be ready for the beginning of next season. But John Ross, star wide receiver, only played, what, two-thirds of the year. It was the second best receiver in the National Football League statistically. And we came under heavy, heavy criticism. We only kept him in the game to try and get 40 touchdowns and break records with Trevor Lawrence, which underneath it all could just be trying to justify the whole Derek Carr trade. I don't know. I don't know what I was trying to prove. But we, needless to say, we are here. We got Damian Ratley, who had 200 yards. Last week in relief duty for John Ross. Had an insane preseason. And I mean, he should have been the guy that debatably should have got promoted and get the opportunity to play when Antonio Brown has his off the field issues and ultimately get traded. We decided to go the free agency route and pick John Ross off the street. So I think it's a good problem to have this many guys and this log jam at the wide receiver position going forward. But for right now, we need him to step up and have some big time games down the stretch. But I mean, 6'2", 200 pounds, 93 speed, 83 catching, and he feels glitchy as hell. He's one of those guys that's you know, 75 or below that plays like an 85. It's ridiculous. He gets great animations and wins a lot of battles. So before we bump into this game, guys, if you like this series, if you like any of the content, likes go a very, very long way. So if we can continue to, you know, get that 1,500, 2,000 likes in that range, uh, that, you know, it is helping my channel uh, so, so much. And I greatly appreciate every one of your guys' likes. So... I want to do a preview of this Texans team, see what's going on, what got them to the dance. I assume Deshaun Watson was very good. He is really good in Madden Sim, and they don't have him. Justin Fields, I forgot all about this. It's been a couple days. This is the big battle. The two best rookie quarterbacks maybe ever. Justin Fields versus Trevor Lawrence. Justin Fields, 4,500 yards, 31 touchdowns, 8 picks. That would be regarded as one of the greatest rookie quarterback seasons ever. If not for Trevor Lawrence going for 4,100 yards, 40 touchdowns, 12 interceptions. Uh, obviously, you're going to get a little bit more scrambling ability from Justin Fields. Not, I mean, maybe not really 200 yards and a touchdown in comparison to what we got with Trevor Lawrence. 62. I mean, it's not too, too far off the pace, even though you, you know, Trevor Lawrence is a good athlete. Justin Fields is a great athlete. Uh, but this is huge, man. This is the future of the game. This is... Uh, you know, the last big, what was the last big hyped, hyped one, two rookie quarterback? Like Goff and Wentz. You know, you got Andrew Luck and RG3, Mariota, Winston, like all those kind of, I mean, Goff and Wentz right now looks so pretty damn good. Um, and, and, you know, it doesn't really, I don't really feel like, you know, Deshaun Watson and Patrick Mahomes, they don't really have that big rivalry. It doesn't feel like there's any other real rivalries. So, we're rekindling that. This is going to be big in the AFC for many years to come, and we get to get an early preview of it here during both of their rookie seasons. Beyond that, they got Duke Johnson, Lamar Miller in their backfield. Uh, also, Kashawn Vaughn from Vandy. So there's some talent there, but no one really dynamic. I'm more so worried about how can we stop and contain DeAndre Hopkins. Uh, Nuke, 80 catches, 1,100 yards, 7 touchdowns. They got Nelson Aguilar, former of the Philadelphia Eagles. Great slot wide receiver, 1,000 yards, 8 touchdowns. Hunter Henry. The former tight end of the Chargers, 700 yards, three touchdowns. Kiki Kute has lots of speed. Will Fuller has lots of speed. They got Cam Brait, who can be a big-time mismatch in the Reds. So that's a that's a loaded offense, man. That is a really good offense. I'm gonna I'm gonna assume their offensive line is just 
that, that's always been the weakness of Houston. Let's see. They got who are their starters? Who do we got for starters? They got garbage, garbage, good, average, garbage. You know, it, it's gonna that's gonna be a big battle for us to win that trench. I think that's that's where we're gonna you know pose the biggest issues. Uh, Body Calhoun was their leading tackler. They still have Clowney on the rock. Like this happened way before the. I, mean, I started my franchise way before the Clowney trade. So Jadavion Clowney must have resigned in Houston at some point. Nine and a half sacks. They got JJ Watt. Nine and a half sacks. Taco Charlton, former Dallas Cowboy. Um, I mean, sure. They got Troy Dye linebacker. It's Sean Gill. I mean, this is a defense. You know, they're always gonna play you tough. But I, I don't. I don't see if we can't contain and shut down Clowney. And J.J. Watt, I mean, obviously, that's a lot to do. That's a big task, especially for our offensive line, which is hot garbage coming off the edge. The two worst tackles, two most sacks given up by any tackle, Colton Miller and Trent Brown. So, you know, work, but I mean, more so Cloudy's in the inside, you know, it's, it's or, uh, J.J. Watt's at least in the inside a little bit that can come on our guards, but Clowney, oof, this could get ugly. It could get ugly. We're going to need to get the ball out very, very quickly. And, um, you know, it's, it, it's a huge game. It's a huge game. I want to get at least that one playoff victory for this new era, this new I mean, John Gruden's done it all. He's a Super Bowl winning head coach. But this is a you know entirely different team. This is a team that has a losing culture. This is a team that has zero playoff success. So at least getting that first win, I think, would be huge for this organization. Look at their X factors. You know, Hopkins and J.J. Watt. You got Fearmonger, Double Mead, Clowney. I'm glad that I'm not seeing any um, the Enforcer. Enforcer is like probably the most overpowered, just, just passive ability. So that looks pretty good. Justin Fields is a superstar. Leapfrog. You got Hurdle Animation, Spin Cycle. So we got to watch him coming out of the pocket. But uh, I, again, I think the biggest matchup here in this game is going to be Mohurst, Cleveland and Furrell going up against kind of an inferior Houston Texan offensive line, but look who's talking. I got two of the most sacks given up playing at O-Tackle on either side of Trevor Lawrence, and they got to try to find a way to contain J.J. Watt and Jadavion Clowney. So it's going to be what offensive line plays best today that gets this win, and I think it's going to be us. Let's get into it. Third and six, going to run a little bit of Tampa 2. Really, really play sticks defense here a little bit. Keep everything in front of us. Get aggressive. Punch them in the mouth. Don't let them get a, an easy win. Oh, here they go. Oh. Hit him at the very, oh, not face mask, Gary on Conley. There we go, nice TFL. Bounce back from that penalty, get some momentum on defense. Oh my God, how is he wide open? Carl Joseph able to make the tackle, but oof, that is blown coverage. I think that's CJ Henderson on the opposing side. What are you doing? There we go, great. I mean, it's gotta be a long day. A long day, Darren Lee. Tackle for loss. Good luck running the ball in this defense. Of, of a present. Oh, Jonathan Abram, though. There's a dominant presence. Abram Tank comes in. We brought the house. And we're going to have to force the Houston Texas to a field goal attempt. That is outstanding red zone and goal line D. Oh, it's no face mask, too. That was clean. Usually for an aggressive player like Abram, you get a free shot like that. There's an unnecessary roughness just waiting to happen. But he's showing a... He's showing some leadership, some growth, making that tight a safe tackle. All right, three points, not bad, not bad. Let's retaliate. Oh, comes Trevor Lawrence coming off the most successful season ever for a rookie quarterback. 4,100 yards, 40 touchdowns, 12 picks. He is going to have to have a standout performance today and outduel Justin Fields. Let's start off with something fairly, you know what? Let's be aggressive. Let's be aggressive. Let's go play action pass. We got CD Lamb in the slot. As long as we get ideal protection, we'll get our quarterback moving. We'll see how the O-line protects. Y is wide open. Damian Ratley overruns the route or an underthrow. We had it. Oh, let's go, Trevor Lawrence. Oh, you got to remember, he got like 80 speed. Not enough, we, we don't run with him a whole lot unless he's running for his life in the pocket because our tackles suck, but he can move. 16 yards, lose the chains. All right, we got third and nine on the 41. You know, depending on where we finish on this, if we don't get it, could be in four down territory. But Jalen Rashard gets open on the backfield. Juke move on Justin Reed. Oh, that is a big time gainer up to the 28 yard line, 30 yards. Maybe the most underrated aspect of our offense is Jalen Rashard at the backfield. Really, really good receiving back. 
Unfortunately, didn't utilize him a whole lot, but you know, playoffs are all about guys breaking out, and it could be his chance here starting today. All right, let's go back to the well here on third and five. I mean, a screen pass is not a pass we, we execute and run a whole lot, so maybe this will catch them by surprise. We dump it off. Jalen Richard, it works. Oh, he makes a couple guys miss. Great blocking out in space. First down, Raiders. Now faced with a third and long. I mean, we can put points up on the board if we're not too risky with it. I like Damian Ratley there on the slant. Let's see if we can get some good protection. Rant oh, he gets open. He gets open. He fills it up. It's double coverage. Morell catches it off the deflection. Still fairly short. Fourth and three. Hmm. Let's go for the field. Let's just tie it up. Let's tie it up. It's still early. What a... Okay, that could have been a lot worse. That could have been a lot worse. All right. I don't know why people keep saying there's like a... Uh, the kicking meter disappears. I've yet to see that. Maybe it's because I'm on all Madden and it's on like all pro or something. But the uh, kicking meter showed up there and we tie this one up at three apiece. Man, our defense isn't really responding right now. Henry, Henry gets open on fairly soft coverage. Abram with the tackle at the end of the first quarter. You'd have to say right now the Texans have all the momentum. Third and four, Justin Fields has been far too comfortable in this pocket, and we are not going to be able to have any success if we let it continue, but a great tackle. Short of the sticks, Jonathan Abram holds him to another field goal attempt. And there's a sack. I will say, if there had to be a negative with Trevor Lawrence, you know, there are re specific release animations in Madden that are good. And I'm not, he doesn't have a bad one, but he doesn't have a good one. Third and 17, we need someone to make a play. I mean, we're going to have to Jalen Rashard back in pass coverage. That's terrible. I don't even know what his pass coverage rating is. Probably 20. We need some time. Oh, oh, Damian Ratley. That was not a great pass thrown behind him. Looks like he got a broken spleen. His kidney exploded. But that was a massive catch. The only muscle cramps. Get your ass back in there. All right. Great pass. Second and 10. Sending up to the nine yard line. That is a combination that's been the biggest disappointment in the offense. I thought Renfro and Trevor Lawrence, that, that Clemson connection would have been, you know, lighting a, like, like, like lightning in a bottle. I mean, Trevor Lawrence. Uh, it's not all his fault. Renfro's missed some time. Oh, great blocking! And Josh Jacobs runs in free. Like I said, yeah, Renfro's been hurt, but if we can get that chemistry going for this playoff run, that's going to be huge. But first touchdown of the game goes to Josh Jacobs. Very well blocked. Kind of shocked at this point because almost every other run attempt has been a TFL behind the line of scrimmage. Ah, Chauncey Gardner Johnson, that athleticism on display, getting a sack, third and a mile for the Houston Texans. Momentum shift in this game. Oh, Renfro, first and ten, makes a miss with the juke, puts the ball up on the five-yard line, will burn a timeout, so we have a full array of play-calling options here to close this half out. All right, second to goal on the four. I like Renfro, I like Richard. Don't really like CD Lamb as our number as our first read here, but we'll see. Trevor Lawrence, step up in the pocket. Jesus, let's try it again. Maybe, maybe we'll go. Maybe we'll go CD Lamb like this. JJ Watt, X Factor. Come on, come on, come on! A touchdown will be huge. Oh, that's not a great play call. It was caught. Hey, hey, there we go. Moves it a little bit. Fourth and goal. No, we got we got to go for glory here. What are we what are we really talking about? You know, what are we really talking about here? This is the kind what would Doug Peterson do? He's gonna go for it in this scenario. We got Ratley, the most dangerous wide receiver in the National Football League. He got wide open. There you go. Kick the field goal. You're you know, you just get the ball, you tie it up. You get a touchdown like that, you kill off all the momentum. The home crowd is hype. And you walk into the lead at halftime. One point lead. Kicking off the second half, we got the ball, so that was huge. That makes that touchdown even more important. We got J.J. Watt out of his X Factor, and running the ball still doesn't look like it's in our best interest. Big TFL by Bernardrick McKinney there. Third and seven on the 40. Let's we'll see if we got someone deep. If not, we got Moreau across the middle of the field. Ooh. We'll check it down to Jalen Richard. Very close to a first down. I think we're going to be inches. Oh, yeah! We'll punt it. We'll play defense. Oh, 
let's get me. Come on, pin that. Get that gong. Get that gong. This is why you punt the ball. Yo, Josh Jacobs, Jingleheimer, Smith. 68 yards. Let's see if we can get a first down here. We're chewing the clock. We're going to start to make the clock work against the Houston Texans. We play 12-minute quarter. We play big boy quarters here. Third and four. Something simple. High percentage play would be great. Oh, Renfro got open. They thought we'd go to the running back. They thought we'd chuck it down to the tight end. But it was Renfro, that Clemson connection. As good as it's been all year. All right, well, I like, uh, I mean, Moreau has been absolute money beating, uh, uh, breaking away from these linebackers. Ooh, they got that one covered up. Oh, there comes Clowney with the sack. Quite a dough line, man. Olan has done a fairly decent job. That's the first real sack of the game. And let's we'll settle for a field goal attempt. It's good. Oh, God. Ooh. What? Did he seriously? They just seriously try to throw it to the tackle? Justin Fields just tried. Okay, not only that, Justin Fields, our corner, who's been very good in uh, Vernon Harker's, enough so to get a brand new contract, just got beat on a route by Max Sharping. Ah. They're desperate. If they're, go if they're going to their backup tackle, their swing tackle, they are desperate because we have shut down DeAndre Hopkins. As there, someone gets open, I don't know who that is, 16, Kiki Kute across the middle, but hey, you gotta keep taking Duncan, you're just chewing up all that clock. Oh, that has gotta be a pick. CJ, let's go. Let's go for it. Oh, uh, not the best decision. I think if we, if we committed to returning that right away, that could have been a pick six, 100 yard pick six, but there you go, man, Justin Fields win your head. One of these QBs playing like a rookie, the other isn't. Oh, Josh Jacobs gets free. He's not very fast. But when you give him space, he's a he's a he's a bowling ball of razor blades and barbed wire. Oh, oh. Am I said this game's gonna be what O line plays better? Not Houston's. All right, it's, it's not final play of the game, but it's pretty much final play of the game. Fourth and fourteen. Is there magic to be had from just? Oh my God, we are getting mugged. Absolutely mugged. And that's, there you go. Pass break up, turnover on downs on the eight yard line. Let's get a little cheeky, third and goal. Let's get back to the ground. We could just run it, kick the field goal, whatever. Touchdown ends this 100%. Damian Ratley. You know that's where we're going. You know that's where we're going. Or we'll, or we'll eat a sack. And either way, they still have to burn a timeout. We can kick a field goal. It's up, and it is good. Vegas 23, Houston 6. Oh, there you go. Down goes Fields. And the clock strikes zero. And the Vegas Raiders have punched their ticket to the AFC Championship game. Complete performance on both sides of the ball. All facets of the game. Trevor Lawrence in the passing game was awesome. The run game started very, very slow, but ultimately ended up dominating the game. Our offensive line played well. Our defensive line played well. Our secondary, did DeAndre Hopkins even get a single catch? This was unbelievable. And uh, in, in a battle of two rookie quarterbacks, you know, one of these guys was bound to play like a rookie, and I'm blessed. I'm bl hashtag blessed. Like a, you know, a frumpy chick on Instagram that's trying to get back in shape. I'm hashtag blessed about this performance. 23 to 6. Just dominating. Trevor Lawrence, 121 QBR, 22 of 25, 246, a touchdown of no picks. Excellent game plan set up by John Gruden. Uh, 92 yards and a touchdown from Josh Jacobs. Jalen Richard had a couple big time plays for us. Foss Rowe, 7 for 58, 6 for 65 for Jalen Richard, 3 for 61 for Renfro. Damian Ratley with the lone touchdown, but well, that was huge. And, you know, hashtag blessed. That, that injury was only a, a cramp and nothing more serious because I don't know if we could handle another injury. I mean, techni technically, you could say A.B. was, you know, that, that's a wide receiver loss. And then John Ross would have been a loss. If we, if we had to go up against Ratley, uh, that'd be really, really tough to overcome looking ahead to the championship game. 
Uh, good news, everyone on the O-line gave up a sack. Cool. Defensively, Abrams, I mean, I, again, I think he's the best linebacker in football. Keanu O'Neill, who? Jonathan Abram, nine tackles, a TFL, a sack. We got three TFLs for Darren Lee, who was our big free agency signing two years ago. It's kind of been, you know, hidden. Not, not really talked about, not making big time plays on this defense. This was maybe his best game in a Raider uniform. Couldn't have came at a better time. We got TFL for Joyner, two TFLs for Mo Hurst, a sack and a half, Cleland Furl, a sack from Chauncey Gardner Johnson, Abram, and Hurst. We got the pick in the end zone from CJ Henderson. As the Raiders are moving on to the AFC Championship game. And in the AFC Conference Championship game, we get to take on, you know, along with the Chargers, the most overpowered team in the AFC, the Cleveland Browns, Baker Mayfield and company. I look forward to the challenge. I hope you guys tune back in. I think that's going to be Sunday. We'll be, we'll be back and we're going to see if we can somehow have, complete this miracle run and make the, make the Super Bowl here. But a home game against the Browns. Miles Garrett, I'm pretty sure every time I played Miles Garrett, he's got at least four sacks on me. So that's going to be pleasant. So you definitely are not going to want to miss that game. But this perfect timing this is the kickoff for the Eagles, Packers, Thursday Nighters, you know, about five minutes. So I get to go watch that. And hopefully we can replicate some of the success being the Philadelphia Eagles that we just had against the Houston Texans. So thank you guys for watching. As always, if you enjoyed the video, smash that like button. Likes, that would be so, so, so very much. And if you're first time stopping by, don't be afraid to hit that subscribe button. And I'll catch you guys on the next one. Peace out. Money I'm spending, I'm out and I'm shopping. You talking that shit, well, you talking and talking. Look at my options, look at me dropping. I send the game like, who are you stopping? Not me, not me, not never. Not me, not me, not never. Not me, not me, not never. I'm way too clever. Look at the kid, Mr. Consistent.